Eichmann in Jerusalem was written as a piece for the New Yorker, and for that reason, an awful lot of people don't consider it philosophy. I think it's one of the deepest philosophical books of the 20th century. And it's deep because in a way that Arendt herself didn't even realize, she's questioning a view about evil and evil intention that was beginning to break down in um, the 20th century, but that nobody had formulated until she, uh, she did so. We talked about until the First World War, but more clearly the Second World War, the modern was characterized by identifying evil actions with evil intentions. And that was a way of distinguishing between moral evil and natural evil, so that you had the view that um, something couldn't be evil unless it was done with evil intentions. This is why we no longer refer to earthquakes and plagues as evils. Okay? Um, or if we do, we're using very archaic language. We talk about them as catastrophes or disasters or suffering, but we don't talk about them as evils. And that's only because of the concept of intention, because after the Lisbon earthquake, uh, the only thing that could be evil were things that had intention. Okay? Now, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't very well thought out because, of course, people commit all kinds of evil actions without evil intentions. And that's really what Arendt showed at the Eichmann trial, is that his intentions were bad um, or mediocre. That is, he was willing to literally murder people in the interest of getting ahead in his career. But that's different than wanting to murder people for the sake of murder. Arendt, in, and that's in a sense what um, talking about the banality of evil means. Now, both the prosecutor and the defense were still in the grip of a picture that we're still in the grip of, namely that um, it can't really be evil unless it has an evil intention. So that if you deny somebody has evil intentions, you must be denying that they're evil, and then you're excusing them. Okay. So what the prosecutor tried to do all along was to show that Eichmann was a horrible, malicious, hateful anti-Semite who just really wanted nothing more with his life than to kill Jews. And what uh, the defense attorney tried to do was to keep saying, well, no, no, his intentions were really quite ordinary and he was just following orders and he was doing this and that. And um, in fact, Arendt says the defense attorney was completely right. Um, but what's at issue is not his intentions, it's what he did, and what he did was evil, even if his intentions were perfectly banal and ordinary.